Hi guys! Have you ever thought about using your filament 3D printer as a kitchen tool? In this video we will test the new Cakewalk 3D. So if you want to know more, then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! But before we start, don't forget to hit like on this video and subscribe our channel. Also, if you want to help us make more cool videos, go ahead and join our Patreon page. Today, we will test the Cakewalk 3D kit. This kit was designed to transform a filament 3D printer in a kitchen tool. This project was created by Marine Corbeillet, a French pastry chef and it was launched on Kickstarter in October. The idea behind this project is to allow anyone to make beautiful decorations in the most diverse culinary dishes. It can be used for decorating cakes, cookies, pies, etc. and personalized dishes giving your personal touch. Cakewalk 3D can be used with different ingredients or mixes as long as they have a certain viscosity. The creator had good results with chocolate, meringue, vegetable puree, ketchup, guacamole and honey. Cakewalk 3D uses food safe materials and it's compatible with several 3D cartesian printers on the market, such as Creality, Anycubic, Alphawise, Prusa or Anet. Unfortunately, we received this kit a few days before the end of the Kickstarter campaign and it ended before we could publish our video. However, it is still available in Indiegogo's website. There are three options available with different components included. For our tests, we received the main extruding components such as the screw, nozzle and the aluminum tube, some screws and the coupling. And this is the screw. It's very light and as we will explain in a few minutes, it's installed inside the tube and it's the component that will push the mix out from the nozzle. This, as well as all the other parts, can go to the dishwasher. At the bottom end of the tube, we have this cone with the nozzle. The nozzle is the same as the ones used on 3D printers, but it needs to be stainless steel and from 1 to 2 millimeters. And finally, the tube itself. This is where we will insert the mix to extrude. To complete the kit, we had to print a few more parts. The small coupler, the top cap, a couple of rings, and the main support. The main support will be secured to the X-axis carriage on the printer. And these are the rings that will secure the tube. Each ring is a single print in place model. And this is the top cap. Normally this piece is included in every kit option. And it's supposed to be made in a transparent material and not have the opening at the edge. And we also printed this small coupling piece. We used PLA filament for all the parts that we had to print. To assemble the tube, we first install the nozzle and the nozzle cap on the bottom side of the tube. The small coupling is inserted on the screw followed by the top cap. All this is then inserted in the tube and the tube is closed. The opening on the top cap allows us to check that the screw inside is turning. At the back of the main support, we need to insert a couple of M4 nuts.
We also need M4 nuts and screws for the rings. One more M4 screw is used to secure each ring to the main support. And this is how the main support looks like with the two rings installed. As we mentioned before, this kit is compatible with several 3D printers on the market, and we will use our Creality Ender 3 Pro to test it. To do that, we need to remove the print head, and since we didn't get an extra stepper motor, we need to disassemble the one from the extruder. We don't need to make any electrical changes, and we can easily install everything back if we need to print with filament again. The print head is easy to remove. Two screws will loosen the print cover, and two more screws will loosen the hot end. Next, we need to unscrew the three screws from the wheels. Now we install the main support and screw back the wheels. The wheel's grip will need to be readjusted by turning the bottom eccentric nut. Next, we remove the PTFE tube from the extruder and remove the extruder stepper motor. To remove it, we need to unscrew the four top screws. Be careful not to lose any of the parts from the extruder. The motor gear also needs to be removed. With the gear removed, we install the coupling. As always, one of the set screws needs to be facing the flat side of the motor shaft. The stepper motor is then installed at the top of the main support, and the cable secured at the side. The stock stepper motor cable is long enough, so no extensions are required. However, the stock stepper motor screws are too long for this support, so we had to get four screws a little bit shorter. We also added some washers because we believe that they are needed here. Due to the support design, there is not enough room for washers at the back, so we could only use washers at the front screws. And now we can install the tube. One thing we noticed was that the main support is very thin at the bottom where it secures to the carriage making it to be wobbly when not having the tube installed. There is already a second version available on Thinkiverse made by the user Media Man. This new version has more thickness at the base and at the top where the stepper motor is attached, and that will keep it from being wobbly. However, we think that the design still needs a bit of tweaking on the carriage screw holes. So, back to the assembly. We just need to tighten the two set screws from the coupling and then tighten the screws from the two rings. We can eventually adjust the height of the tube to prevent it to touch the bed when homing the Z. This can be done by lowering the Z until the Z end stop is triggered, and then lower the tube so that the nozzle almost touches the bed. To work with this kit, the Z0 coordinate will be different depending on what we will print on. So with that in mind, 
we modified our slicer profile to only home the X and Y axis before the print, and the Z height is set manually before printing. Normally, the printer's firmware is set to prevent cold extrusions, and because we will extrude food without nozzle temperature, the slicer star G-code must include the M302S0 command to allow cold extrusion. OK, and the installation is now complete. During our tests and because we had to place and remove the two very often to refill, the rings eventually started to break. So we designed new and stronger rings and uploaded them on our Thingiverse page. And now it's time to go to the kitchen. For our first tests we prepared some meringue mix. For this we followed the recipe and mixed it the sample that came with the kit with water. We started by mixing then by hand and then with the mixer. A few minutes later we got the correct consistency and we could then fill the tube. Then we inserted the screw and then we closed it with the top cap. The first tests didn't go that well, but after a few trials and slicer profile adjustments we finally started to see some results. The retraction works pretty well as we see no spills during the transition movements. For the first tests, we printed on glass and on baking paper. Baking paper is a better option because it's easier to remove the prints. We also tested printing on a cookie and the result was pretty nice. We then melted some chocolate and tried printing with it following the instructions.
but once again we had some problems. The low temperatures that we have at the moment makes it hard to print with chocolate because it hardens very quickly and stops extruding. We had better results with our own chocolate and cream mix. This is because our mix is softer and doesn't harden as easily as the chocolate does. And all our tests were done with the 1mm nozzle that came with the kit. So, printing with this kit and get perfect results might not be that easy, but it's doable. The major difficulty is to get the right consistency or viscosity of the ingredients and get the slicer profile perfectly dialed in. And for different ingredients, you will probably need different slicer profiles as well. Printing 3D pieces might only be possible with thicker ingredients, like chocolate, but as we just mentioned, we had some issues with our first trials. Further slicer profiles and ingredients need to be tested. This kit is a cheap and super easy to install solution for the guys that want to start to print with food. And that's it you guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if yes, please give it a like. Feel free to leave your comments down below. We will see you guys next time, bye!